In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. It is not here yet, but almost. This whole season of Advent preparing for the coming of Jesus. And it's so close now, just those last few days. But this whole season is the reminder of our awaiting his coming in all of its senses. We know he has come into the world. We know that he is still coming into the world. We know that he will come back into the world. And so as we prepare to celebrate this great sacrifice in his memory, We first acknowledge the times that we have given up in our preparation, the times that we have become complacent in his return, and we turn to God now and ask forgiveness for all of our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, should you build my house and a, and a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. And I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you, and when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord.
establish your descendants forever and set up your throne A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you, according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ. Be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. You will be great. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who is called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. 
may it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. For some of you, you would have rather had me proclaim the gospel from the center with a spotlight, and I have a lisp and carry a blanket. That is the speech Linus gives to Charlie Brown about exactly what Christmas is truly all about. I've also watched at least four different versions of Christmas Carol this year. Um, I always wondered what it would be like to have a, a, a kind of a Catholic version of the Christmas carol. In the end, when Scrooge is by his tomb, it's the end of time. He's been fast-forwarded, and it's not just the fact that he's died and not been mourned. It's the fact that it's the resurrection. He hears the trumpet, and all of the bodies, joyfully, not in a scary way, come up out of the tombs and ascend to heaven. And Scrooge is left there by himself as he doesn't come back up out of the tomb, lost forever. But I won't write that version, because no one would read it. But all these different movies go through our minds, and we are kind of formed by them. There's a horrible movie, not telling you the name, of course, but in it, it was uh, a, a deceased priest was speaking through this young girl. And the message that he was trying to get to the world was the church is built of living stones. It's not this brick and mortar. Stop worshiping it. And in the movie, the Vatican gets involved and wants to keep it quiet. Because if you tell people it's living stone, then you won't give us money anymore for our pretty churches. It's a terrible movie. It makes no sense. But that's what David, in the first reading, that's kind of what it's getting to, and that's where the metaphors can take us. Here I am after a life of blessing and joy, and I want to build a house for God. And God's answer is, you will not build me a house to worship in. I will give you the proper house to worship in. I will give it to your son. Now, in all prophecy, there's an immediate uh, result to the prophecy where his son Solomon does build a temple. But there's also the prophetic result, where the son of David is Jesus. Now, this is the true temple for us to worship in. The body of Christ in all its meetings. That this is truly what this whole point of all of this season is about. God is with us. God looking down and seeing how we live. God looking down and seeing our existence and our anxieties and fears. And then God coming down, not just to bring us comfort, but to become one of us. And then show us the path that leads to life. In the letter to Hebrews, it's made more explicit that Jesus is the temple where we worship. Jesus is the priest that offers the sacrifice. And Jesus himself is the sacrifice. He is where we worship, how we worship, and who we worship. So that's what we've all been preparing for this whole Advent season. Also, maybe just some of the, the wordings bring us, remind us of movies, but also prayers. I wonder how many remember that the opening prayer for Mass is the prayer we pray in the Angelus. For forth we beseech you, your grace into our hearts. That's the same prayer we pray in the Angelus. And so, all these things remind us. And that pour forth, pour forth in your abundance. One of the prayers I always say at Mass, uh, when I pour, if you see, I pour the water into the wine. And it's through the mystery of this water and wine may we share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And normally it's um, the mixture of water and wine that Christ is the wine, we are the water. And when the drop goes in, it's this mixture that can't be separated, which creates for a good theology of Jesus, which creates for a good theology of 
of our existence of church. But also it can lead us more into the whole point of this season, that perhaps the wine is actually us, that he sees the blood of our anxieties, the, 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 the riling up the blood of the violence we do to each other and to ourselves. And then even one tiny drop of God's grace and love coming into our lives can diffuse throughout all of it. We know that we have a beautiful church building here. We know that um, its beauty is a tool that leads us to heaven, that helps us. We don't worship the bricks that made this building. We are the body of Christ. And we come together into this building to be sheltered from storms. Literally and metaphorically. And so we come in here to receive the grace, even if it's one tiny drop, one little host. And that mixes in with our whole lives and changes us. But then as we become that, we can then go out and be that one little drop to the rest of the world. That's what Scrooge learned in A Christmas Carol. I have to care for other people. Now it went negative, nobody cared about him because he didn't care for anyone. And in our world as it gets cold out, there are those that feel that they have no one to love them. They don't see the point of God, they don't see the point of Jesus. And so as you have been fed in the body of Christ, as you have received, as you have learned, as all these different movies and songs and prayers have formed us, then we in turn need to go out. Just one little person, just one little kind word, just one little drop in someone else's turbulent life. But that one little, that one little moment of grace, then you can transform them and bring peace to their lives. Be Jesus for others. Be this peace in their lives. You have been gifted and blessed with all of this time to prepare. You have been gifted and blessed by knowing that Christ is already among us. And so in this Christmas season, go out and be Jesus for them that do not see. Proclaim his joy to those that have not yet heard. And in the end, when the tombs open and all ascend to heaven, see how many that were around you raise at the same time. And then we can all spend an eternity in that great banquet, that great feast, the Mass of Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And with all of the blessedness that we have received in our life, we offer up those in need that the cooling waters of Christ may pour forth into them. For Pope Francis, may the Lord bless him in his zeal and joy for the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. For our elected officials, may the Holy Spirit conform their hearts to charity and justice as they make their governing decisions. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who suffer the harshness of winter, may the Lord in his infinite mercy endure they endure they have an adequate shelter and food for their tables. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For all gathered here today, may the grace of discernment help us fulfill God's plan for uh, each of us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For a deeper trust and openness to the Holy Spirit in people discerning a call to serve Christ as a priest, deacon, or in the consecrated life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For those who have died, may they soon come face to face with Jesus their Savior, and for Leona Nesselrode, the intention of this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Gracious and loving God, as you have poured into our hearts your love and grace, help us to share what we have with others, that the well may never go dry, but we keep expanding your love throughout the world. We ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Better the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of the Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling, John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, 
We sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings, and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love, For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, And once more, giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, We celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy, then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness 
the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
taste and see. For those watching from a distance, you can join with me now to make your own spiritual communion. My Jesus, my Jesus, I believe that you are present. I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. In the most blessed sacrament, I love you above all things. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you. And I desire to receive you into my soul into my soul since i cannot now receive you sacramentally since i cannot now receive you sacramentally come at least spiritually into my heart come at least spiritually into my heart i embrace you i embrace you as if you were already there as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you and unite myself wholly to you Never permit me, never permit me to be separated from you. To be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray.
Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever near, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The one great teaching of God with us is that Christ goes out to meet people where they are at, uh, does not wait for people to come to him. So when visitors come this weekend, uh, we make room for them. Yes, it's that speech. Someone sitting in your pew at Christmas, just let them. You can have your own later. Uh, Mass this for Christmas is uh, at... 5 p.m., 7 p.m., at midnight, and 9 a.m. I would encourage you to just don't go to the 5, because you know they're all going to want to come in. But I always went to 4, just for me, for Christmas. Just wait. And if you come to the 5 and you see that, oh, there's a lot of people, you know what? I can come back at 7. Oh, how blessed you are. But it'll be great and we'll be together. Uh, Even in the balcony, you've got to wear a mask the whole time because there's people everywhere, uh, and I don't want to be a super spreader here. Um, But someone will bring communion up to the balcony. It'll be great, it'll be joyous, and we will do what we can to meet people where they are at and to celebrate the holidays the best we can. There are some churches that are doing call-in reserve seating. I don't want to do that. We will just naturally come to different masses, and we will naturally celebrate with great joy together. This is one of those three-parter amens. The Lord be with you, and bow down for the blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord.